Good day everyone, here we are again. I am Jericho Ragudo, a BS Education major in English. What I'm going to do now is reporting about constructivism, knowledge construction, and concept learning in Moodle 14. It is under the subject of Ed 203, Facilitating Learner-Centered Teaching. So, in this unit, 3.3 Cognitive Process, I'm going to tackle about view of constructivism. So, in a continuation report in this module, I'm going to tackle you this. What is constructivism or a constructivist theory? So, in this theory, a theory that says learners can construct knowledge rather than just passively take in information. As people experiencing the world and reflect upon those experiences as they build their own representations and incorporate new informations into their pre-existing knowledge or schemas. And the second one is, it is an important learning theory that educators are used to help their students learn. Constructivism is crucial to understand as an educator because it influences the way all of your students learn. So, well, constructivist theory is formed by Jane Piaget in 1896 to 1980, a cognitive constructivist, and Lev Vygotsky, a Soviet psychologist and social constructivist. Next one, we are going to tackle about principles of constructivism. The first principle we have of constructivism is knowledge is constructed. Students can take pieces and put them together in their own unique way, building something different than what another student will build. Learning is constructed through meaningful real-world experience. The student's culture, the student's experience, the background, their active engage, engagement, their students' perspective, the students constructed and problem solving. So, knowledge is constructed, not transferred by Peter Singer. Knowledge construction is shared environments by Guardina Lowe and Anderson. Here are some examples. Number one, sharing. Sharing and comparing information between learners. Number two, exploring. Exploring inconsistency and dissonance of learners. Number three, negotiating. Negotiating of meaning, co-construction of knowledge. Number four, testing. Testing and modifying synthesis or co-construction. Number five, phrasing. Phrasing of agreement of newly constructed meaning. For the second principle of constructivism is people learn to learn as they learn. For example, if a student is learning the chronology of dates for a series of historical event, at the same time, they are learning the meaning of chronology. And if the student is writing paper about history, they are also learning the principles of grammar and writing as well. And let's move on for the third principle of constructivism. Third principle is learning is an active process. Learners need to engage in the world and do something in order to learn. It is not a passive activity. And for the fourth principle we have in constructivism is learning is social activity. Just like our teachers, our family, our peers, and also our acquaintance gives impact to our learning. As learning is directly associated to our connection with other people. We educators more likely to be successful as we understood peers' involvement. That is the key in our learnings. Well, a progressive education will recognize the social interaction. That is the key to learn more and use for conversations, interaction, and group application to help students to retain their knowledge. 
And for the fifth principle we have in constructivism is learning is contextual. As we learn in ways connected to the things we tend to know or we already know, what we believe and more. The things we learn and the point we tend to remember are connected to the things going on around us. And in teaching, learning is contextual as it carries out a lot of a task within the target activities. As contextual, contextual teaching and learning or CTL approach, it involves active students in the learning process to discover the concept learned through the knowledge and experiences of the students. For the sixth principle we have in constructivism is knowledge is personal. So, each person will have their own prior knowledge and knowledge and experiences to bring to the table. It is because constructivism is based on our own experiences and beliefs, knowledge that becomes a personal affair. So the way and the things people learn and gain from education will all be very different. So here's some thoughts about David Janazen. Every amateur epistemologist knows that knowledge cannot be managed. Education has always assumed that knowledge can be transferred and that we can be carefully control the process through education. That is a grand illusion. So that's his thought. So, and also that knowledge is personal, as implicit knowledge requires interpretation and knowledge to sense of it. So individually, we can manage information flows, make sense of them, and share with others. So that is knowledge is personal. That is why knowledge is personal. And for the seventh principle in constructivism is learning exists in the mind. So why learning exists in the mind? So engaging the mind is the key to successful learning. Hands-on experiences and physical actions are necessary for learning, but those elements aren't enough. As learning also needs to get involved activities for the windows for the minds, not just our hands. So mental experiences are needed for attaining knowledge. Also that, learning exists in the mind as they perceive each new experience, learners will actually update their own mental models to reflect the new information and well therefore construct their own interpretation of reality. And for the last principle we have in constructivism is motivation is key to learning. So educators need to have ways to engage and motivate learners to activate their minds and help them to be excited about education. Well, students are unable to learn if they are unmotivated. Without motivation, it's difficult for learners to reach into their past experiences and make connections for new learning. An important predictor of learning and achievement, students' learns can learn widely, can produce high-quality efforts, learn more effectively, learn more deeply as well, and perform better in classes and on standardized tests. Then, a student's motivation and relevance, immediate applicability, future usefulness, need matching, experience, modeling, and choice. For the confidence is learning requirements, self-confidence, expectations, attributions, and difficulty. For satisfaction, scheduling positive outcomes, unexpected rewards, natural consequences, avoid negative influences. And for the attention, inquiry, humor, variability, participation, concreteness, and incongruity, and conflict. According to Mary Burns, Mary Lou Michaka, and Vicky DeMox identified six principles as important to constructivist learning theory. So here are six principles of constructivist learning. First, we have learning. Learners brings unique prior knowledge, experience, and beliefs to a learning situation. 
Second one, we have knowledge is constructed uniquely and individually in multiple ways through a variety of authentic tools, resources, experiences, and context. For the third one is learning is both an active and reflective process. For the fourth one, we have learning is a development process of accommodation, assimilation, or rejection to construct new conceptual structures, meaningful representations, or new mental models. For the fifth one, we have social interaction introduces multiple perspective through reflection, collaboration, negotiation, and shared meanings. For the last principle they have is learning is internally controlled and mediated by the learner. Here are types of constructivism. First, we have cognitive. In this method, works to help students in learning new information by connecting to the things they already know enabling them to make modifications in their existing intelligence to accommodate the new information. It states knowledge is something that is actively constructed by learners based on their existing cognitive structures. According to Jane Piaget's theory, a constructivist theory, he developed suggests that intelligence change as children grow not just about acquiring knowledge the child has to develop or construct mental model of the world and for Lev Vygotsky sociocultural theory Lev Vygotsky is a Soviet psychologist and social constructivist he views that human developed as a socially mediated process in which children acquire their cultural values beliefs, and problem-solving strategies through collaborative dialogues with more knowledgeable members of society. He also comprised of concepts such as culture-specific tools, private speech, and the zone of proximal development. The zone of proximal development and scaffolding refers to the difference between what a learner can do without help and what he or she can achieve with guidance and encouragement for a skilled partners. Vygotsky believed that when a student is in the zone of proximal development for a particular task, providing the appropriate assistance will give the students enough of a boost to achieve the task. For Jerome Bronner, in 1966, he proposed three modes of representation. It is called Bronner Learning Theory of Education. It is an active representation or action-based. Number two, iconic representation or image-based. Number three is symbolic representation or symbolic-based. For the second type of constructivism is social constructivism. This constructivism focuses on the collaborative nature of learning. Also a sociological theory of knowledge according to human development that is socially situated and knowledge is constructed through interaction with others. The level of potential development is the level at which learning takes places. It comprises cognitive structures that are still in the process of maturing, but which can only mature under the guidance or in collaboration with others. Also that knowledge developed from how people interact with each other their culture and society at large and the students rely on others to help create their building blocks for the third types of constructivism is radical constructivism this theory was developed by ernst von glasserfield in 1974 
It is different from cognitive and social constructivism. It is, focuses on the idea that learners and the knowledge they construct tell us nothing real, only help us function in our environment. The overall idea is that knowledge is invented, not discovered. The thing we bring to the table make it impossible for us to have truth, only interpretations of knowledge. And for the characteristics of constructivist and application of constructivism in facilitating learner-centered teaching, for learning and teaching, one of the primary goals of using constructivist teaching is that students learn how to learn by giving them to the training to take initiative for their own learning experience. And according to Audrey Gray, the characteristics of a constructivist classroom are as follows. The learners are actively involved. The environment is democratic. The activities are interacted and student-centered. The teachers facilitate a process of learning in which students are encouraged to be responsible and autonomous. And also that, it is important to understand how teachers can apply constructivism inside their classroom to create a unique learning environment for students. For teachers, has a role to create a collaborative environment where students are actively involved in their own learning. And teachers must also work to understand the pre-existing conceptions and understanding of students, then work to incorporate knowledge with those areas. And teachers will also, will also need to adjust their teaching to match the learner's level of understanding. So here are the constructivist classrooms, why they rely on four Ks to be successful. First, we have no shared knowledge between teachers and students. Second, we have shared authorities between teachers and students. Third, we have teachers act as a guide or facilitator. Fourth is learning groups consist of small numbers of students and thus planning for instructions prior knowledge and experience students motivation interest needs and learning styles the students construct his or her own meaning thought through experience research reported ideas students centered learning for higher for higher achievement and motivation here are examples of constructivist activities first we have experimentation second we have research projects, field trips, films, class discussion. Experimentation. Students individually perform an experiment and then come together as a class to discuss the results. Research projects. Students research a topic and can present their findings to the class. Field trips. These allow students to put the concepts and ideas discussed in class in a real-world context, field trips would be often be followed by a class discussion. Films. This provides visual context and thus bring another sense into the learning acti experiences. Class discussions. This technique is used in all of the methods described above. It is one of the most important distinctions of constructivist teaching in method. And here are the rules of teaching. First, we have modeling. Second, we have coaching. And third, we have scaffolding. And lastly, the essence of constructivist theory is the idea that learners must individually discover and transform complex information if they are to make it their own way and teachers became the guide on the side instead of the stage on the stage, which helps students to discover their own meaning instead of lecturing all classroom activities. Thank you for listening. Hope you've learned a lot.